Okay, so let's get into it. I wanted to try out a few things. I picked up the Misha BB cream that everyone has been talking about. This has been on my radar for such a long time. I'm so excited I'm finally able to try it. I picked it up in the shade 27, which is Honey Beige. When that initially came out, I felt like there weren't that many shades available um, for deeper skin tones. And as you guys know, when it comes to K-Beauty, that's kind of the case most of the time, just because it's obviously catered towards lighter skin tones. K-Beauty in general really emphasizes having a lighter skin tone and it's obviously different beauty standards. But I'm happy that they have this shade and they actually have, I believe, two darker ones. I just felt like, I believe it was shade 29. I felt like it was a little bit too orangey um, just looking at the swatches. From Etude House, I picked up the Fixing Tint and I've been wanting to try this. I almost picked up two of these, but I picked this one up in the shade Ginger Milk Tea, which I love the packaging of this, and this just really intrigued me. Let me show you. But I do have the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette. I feel like I had talked about them in my BoxyCharm unboxing recently, and I was like, I really want to try the brand. I was hoping that I would get it in my BoxyCharm, but I didn't end up getting it. And I don't know if they saw that video and just wanted to put me, like, on the PR list. I don't know if I'm on the PR list or if it was just a one-time thing, but they did send me the Essential Palette, which is so exciting. We're not going to use today, but it's the LA Girl Pro Color Foundation Mixing Pigment in the white shade. I picked this up because, you know, if you don't know, I am going to be trying every foundation in my collection, and there are some foundations that we're going to be testing out within the next few weeks that are too dark for me. I definitely will be picking up the blue tone which neutralizes foundations and the black tone which helps to deepen foundations because I feel like this is just so nifty for like anybody. I love this because it has a pump which as you guys can see like isn't that amazing for a BB cream that's so cool. This has SPF 42. It's a multifunctional BB cream which features UVA UVB protection, brightening and wrinkle caring benefits and high coverage. My skin is definitely on the drier side today, and it is what it is. It's only been cold here for like maybe two days, maybe three days, so it's kind of crazy. So that's what it looks like. That was one pump. Let's do a swatch. Okay, so definitely it is too light for me. I was hoping that I got the right shade, but maybe... I will try my best to like maybe not go in with a ton of product I don't know maybe we'll darken it with something else okay I feel like as I blend it doesn't look too bad but maybe I'm a combination of shades which if you're medium skin tone you know sometimes we fall into that category where there's not a perfect shade for us because there's either like a darker shade or a lighter shade but definitely Sometimes I feel like brands in general just kind of suck at making medium skin tone shades. Aside from like the slight, you know, color being wrong, I love the way this looks. This is like perfect. It's not super dewy and it's not super matte. So the issue is I would love to fill this up. I just, I don't know, like do you guys think it matches? It's not like a horrible color difference, but it's just like... I needed something a little bit darker, you know? But I want to go in with my Synchro Skin from Shiseido. This is too dark for me. This is in the shade 420 Bronze. And I love the formulation, but because it's too dark, I really just haven't been able to use it. Which is actually why I got the Mixing Pigment. But we're just going to use this, a little bit of this, to kind of even out the brightness. It looks to me like the Misha one is a little bit too... Okay, I think that looks okay. I think the Misha one is like more on the matte side. Okay, I think that actually looks really good. And the Shiseido one is more of a dewier skin finish. So maybe these two can balance each other out. Okay, I think that definitely did something very impressed and very happy with that combo and I'm very happy with the Misha. I definitely maybe could get like a 
um, the LA Girl in the darker shade, and then I can maybe figure out if I can just, you know, mix that in to get my perfect shade instead of getting another one. This lived up to the hype for sure. Good Apple by KBD. Because this always comes in handy. I wanted to go in with a little bit of the e.l.f. Hydro Camo in Light Sand because it's a hydrating uh, concealer and I felt like because it's a little bit more dry outside today, we can, I don't know, actually put it to some use. We've had like a cold front here and my skin is just not used to the cold at all. I'm also like leaving for New York literally in two days. So my skin, we're, we're going to have to see what my skin is looking like when I'm over there. So this is it in all of its glory. I swatched it, and honestly, the shimmer swatched pretty decently. I'll say these first three were a little bit on the... They weren't as soft as I was expecting. They definitely had some grit to it, and it just... It wasn't as soft, so I kind of, like, when I was doing my swatches, had to kind of go over it. I had to build it up. Which, you know, to some people can be great and to other people you might not like that. But these two at the end swatched really well. Like, I'm gonna go into Compassion. We'll just start out simple. Okay, so these mattes are definitely blending. And now I'm putting True Self in the outer thirds. I don't know if I should do an all matte look today. This is Affirmation. This is Confident. Let's start with Affirmation. Okay, that is so pretty. So maybe because these aren't like a super soft formula, that's why I can just tap it in without really um, having to worry about fallout because so far I don't have any fallout, which is kind of insane. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of True Self and Fearless, which is a black. And I'm just gonna kind of like mix them a little bit together. And we're gonna kind of deepen out the outer corner with this. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit because I feel like it's I don't know I feel like I come on here and we do you know a lot of makeup reviews and honestly it's been such a fun time I haven't really been on top of updating you guys with my like personal how I'm feeling personally and like things I have going on so I definitely want to you know have a good mix on this channel obviously I do have a lifestyle channel so if you really want an in-depth look at my regular life you can see a lot of that on that channel basically last night I had like one of the worst nights that I've had in a while and it could have easily ruined my day today it could have easily just ruined how productive I've been recently and how well I've been doing for myself recently but honestly I feel like my mindset has changed and I just want to point that out because I really feel like if the same thing would have happened earlier this year, I would have been such a mess. I feel like I actually truly learned how to maintain boundaries with people. It has easily been one of the harder years for me, for sure. But I will say that I'm still really proud of myself for doing my best. Something that I feel like really contributed to helping me is actually a book and i'll insert it first of all i want to say that i got this book rack from Ansi twinkle here on youtube if you guys don't watch her you definitely should she's so funny she's from dubai she moved to america this year and i've been watching her since she had like 20k she did a video talking about how like she always gets i don't know taken advantage of and I mean, honestly, just, just watch the video, <laughs> but she basically ended up recommending this book. I'm a huge, like, reader, and this year I really kind of wanted to get back into reading, so I added it to my, my list of books that I wanted to read, and I kind of was reading it slowly. I will say, if you, like, don't have time or, like, whatever, I would definitely recommend chapter 8 because chapter 8 is kind of about attachment style and how like your childhood affects your attachment style so I definitely would read that specific chapter if you again if you don't have like the time to read even though I personally think you should take some time out of your day to read the entire book is about setting boundaries and why we're bad at it and 
I guess, possible ways that you could feel when you're setting boundaries. So, like, I remember I was reading, and one of the examples was, okay, you don't like to set boundaries because you don't like when people are mad at you. Very true. Or, like, you avoid confrontation. And I feel like a lot of people are like that. There was just so much useful information in there, and I think for anybody at any age, like, it's always a good idea to read it because I think no matter how old you are, like, boundaries play a huge part in your life, whether it's setting boundaries with, like, family or friends or people you're dating. It can really just, it goes a long way. I've been reading that book throughout the week, and then something happened, and I was like, I know myself, I know that I can easily just pretend that that didn't happen and just continue and be nice. I decided, no, like, I'm gonna have boundaries. And one of the things that it said is, like, sometimes people don't, like, listen to your boundaries because you also, like, don't enforce them strictly enough. So, like, if you set a boundary and then somebody goes against that and then you just choose to, like, accept that then that's like setting the tone that they know that they can cross a boundary all the time and it doesn't even matter because obviously if it mattered to you then you would there would be some type of like like negative effect like somebody crossed your boundary so now you cut them out of your life and sometimes I think I can set boundaries but then kind of like backtrack and so it makes people probably not take me seriously in terms of my boundaries and I realized like that's what I've been doing and that's what I've been doing like all year and I'm so over it pause this was great I think my eye look looks so good really good daytime look but also still like fun sultry and glamorous read that book let me know your thoughts boundaries can be very you know hard to deal with and very confusing at times because it's hard to set boundaries with people that you're close to. It's hard to set boundaries with like family especially. But everybody needs boundaries. And that book really made me realize a lot about myself. And it also made me pinpoint my attachment style. Which I always kind of knew was my attachment style. But I didn't really know. And it also really emphasized that I have never had one original thought phrases you might say to yourself or phrases that might go through your head and I was like I think I say like there might have been five phrases and I was like wow three out of five of this is so me I don't know if you guys can see but I have been using my grande lash consistently for like probably three weeks now and I've definitely noticed a difference however I've also definitely noticed darkening of my lids so keep that in mind it's definitely not going to make me stop using it because I love the effect i love that i can just wear mascara and have it look really good i didn't even set my face you guys and like look at how good it looks like i don't even want to set it today i switched it up we're gonna use huda beauty this is the banana bread this must be my sister's that i took on accident because she kept the little top which is very smart and you should definitely do that because this gets messy let me know if your nose also runs when you do your makeup or is it just me because I pointed this out to my sister and in the moment she was like no like I don't know what you're talking about and then right after I said that she says that every time since I told her that now her nose runs when she does her makeup too and I was like wow I really just like I really did that love this powder it's a good one so we're mostly just setting the center of our face with this powder and then I will set the rest of my face, but you'll see how I do that differently. Dust that away because I don't like to keep the bake on or whatever for too long because it's definitely drying. Then I'll also go in with this brush and I will swirl it around my powder and I'll lightly set the rest of my face. We don't need like a ton of powder on the rest of our face. Throughout the day, it'll get more natural looking because my oils itself will peek through, contour my nose. Okay, I didn't do the best job contouring, but I'm just going to tap it out with my sponge. Also, quickly, I'm going to bronze my face with this. So, I went in with the cork liner, as I always do. Definitely not new. I'm going to go in with my KKW liner, 
before I go in with the lip tint that I have. Because I kind of want to blank out my lips. As you guys can see, it is broken and I have to shake it out of the thing. If anybody on Kim's team is watching, please re-release these. We're going to go in with the Etude House Fixing Tint in Ginger Milk Tea. Not going to lie to you, I did try this on my own with my natural like lip color um, yesterday when I first got it in the mail. Look at it. It's cute. You can definitely keep building this, which I really like. And I like the feeling. It kind of feels like you're putting water. I think I'm liking the way that my lashes are looking today with just nothing on them. But let's do blush. Let me go find a blush. I know, I should have grabbed all this before I sat down. So I'm going to use Patrick Tosh. She's so LA. Um, I opted for this one because I wanted something warmer, but not something glittery because I was going to use my e.l.f. blush but then it has glitter in it. Easy, this blends out. I purposely go with my finger because I just like the way it looks better. Uh, my jewelry, this necklace is from Soul Sister. The, this is from Joey Baby NYC. My little jacket which I'll show you is from Costco. This is from Express. My pants are from Target. It's like really nice outside so I should do my hair down because I never do my hair down because I'm always lazy. I'm just gonna wand my hair. You have no idea. Like if you don't film videos you have no idea what the setup looks like and it's a hot mess. But anyways we're gonna brush out my hair. So so I'm leaving for New York um, in two days. I'm very excited about it. That teddy jacket in the background is definitely going to go with me because it's cold over there and I'm pretty sure it was snowing like last night because my sister told me. And I'm very excited because I want to go to a few like pop-up shops and I want to go to like Fifth Avenue and like look at all of the Christmas stuff. Um, also, as soon as I get back from my trip, I have work in office again, which is like, you know, I actually really enjoy going in office now. So I'm excited because we have a co-working space. It's not like an office that is really cute and I'm just looking forward to it. So definitely follow my lifestyle channel because I will definitely be posting like work week in my life vlogs. I'm a manager now, which is exciting. I'm definitely not afraid to interview. I love interviewing actually, it's my favorite part. One thing led to another and I ended up interviewing for this manager position. I went into it just happy that they called me for an interview. I ended up getting the role, which was very exciting, but in that waiting period because it took about a week and a half and I knew it was down between me and one other candidate at one point because I was told that it would have been the easiest thing, especially being me, and I think being anybody, normal person, um, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get it. Like that person probably has so much more experience. Like they're probably older than me, which we'll talk about that in another video. But I feel like oftentimes in workplaces, like because I'm younger on the younger side than most of my colleagues, I do feel like sometimes I get not taken seriously, like very ageist in my opinion. But anyways, I'm not going to let these negative thoughts get in my way because honestly, like how you think it really manifests in your reality. So what I did was I lit my Palo Santo, which I can show you, and it says, I release negativity and enter into a positive new future. As you guys can see, I like this pretty often. So anytime I'm like, oh, I need to like meditate, I need to like take a reset, I will like that. I'll play some Hearts Tones, which is, if you guys don't know, frequencies that are healing. And I said to myself, like I repeated to myself again and again while lighting that, while listening to Hearts Tones, I just repeated affirmations to myself. And so anytime I had a negative thought come up in my head, I would just repeat an affirmation like, I'm good enough, I'm qualified enough, I'm smart enough. If you're going to be manifesting something, you have to act like you already have it. You have to put yourself in the mindset that you already have it. And this sounds so ridiculously crazy because I am one person who a couple years ago was like, this, is this even real? Like, do people actually do this? And when I started doing it, I'm telling you, everything changed for the better. 
even if, you know, manifesting is just some made up theory that doesn't actually work, changing your mindset benefits you so much. Even if you're not spiritual and you don't believe in anything outside of like science, um, manifesting and like positive thought patterns really impact you. So doing affirmations, whether or not you think it's going to manifest something for you, is still good for you because overall it's good for your mental health. One of my things that I always go back to when people try to rebuttal this is if you've ever seen people in the hospital when you die from a broken heart, that in itself is proof that your emotions do impact you physically and can impact your life. So when people die of broken heart, I think that's just another prime example that your feelings really do impact you. Like it really does impact your health and how you feel and if you're willing to continue living. And I think that is just something that always in my head really sealed it in that your thoughts are powerful. We're gonna spray the face with the Stage Proof Matte Setting Spray just to kind of mattify things. And I think I need to set this area because my hair is definitely gonna stick to my cheeks since we used a cream product. This is a Luxie 522. I never say the brushes I'm using because I have so many of them that I don't even know them. She's so LA, we're gonna go in with the powder side. Because while I do really, really love the way that the cream looks on the skin, like very natural and hydrated, my hair is gonna stick to it. And I got this sent to me. This is from Chloe. It is the Atelier de Fleurs. I've been trying to learn French, okay? But I'm really kind of not doing the best. But I recently got sent this to me in PR and it smells so good. So this is gonna be my scent of the day. I'm also going to take this with me to New York because look at how cute the packaging is. Very like luxurious floral scent. That's how I would describe it. Ugh, it smells so good. That is it for my chit chat get ready with me. Thanks for sitting down and listening to me ramble. And so far, like all the K-beauty stuff I used, I am insanely impressed with. I don't think my base has ever looked this good in my entire life, to be honest. Especially when like I have texture here, you know, and I feel like I normally have texture Also, the Dominique Cosmetics palette literally like looks this is such a like wearable daytime look But when you look at it in natural light, which I'll check in for you It looks even better. Also, don't forget to subscribe because we're trying to hit 1k before the end of 2022 like let's get it going, you know, so I wanted to check in because I just came back before I go ahead and take a shower 6.44 and I've been running and sweating and outside and my face still looks so good. I literally am obsessed. This is like really impressive. I am 100% doing this combination again. Like if you haven't tried K-Beauty, you have to try it because I've never like looked better. Even the pictures I was taking, I was like, what is happening?